Hello. How is everybody doing on this wonderful? What is it? Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Also, it's it's, it's all Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. What about it? It's Tuesday. Every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here is the Wolf Den Podcast. Whether or not it's also my wife's birthday. Sorry, honey. It's also I gotta be here. It's People also need your birthday. Saturday was my birthday. Thanks for remembering. I, well, listen, I know that it was Saturday. I'm, they didn't see you on Saturday. These people here didn't uh, see you. So today is the day that they could wish you a happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm 35. I'm old. My knees hurt. I had cake before the show. I'm probably going <laughs> to have to poop it out during the show. Uh not fun. I treated myself to a new Batman toy. It's the Rebirth mm-hmm. style from McFarlane Toys. And by oh, treating wow. myself, meaning I pre-ordered it months ago, and it just ha- so happened to come on my birthday. Oh, so my God. Nice. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to me, indeed. Um. Uh, what was I gonna say? I, 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 I here we go. Uh, right here, I have a nice little coffee. Uh, the latte art today is uh, a butt with um, with uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 stretch marks. That's today's <laughs> that's today's coffee. Uh, I put a little bit. Is of, it is it one of those like uh, is it one of those three D butts or is it a? Uh... Oh no, oh no! It's just a flat, <laughs> nice little flat butt, just, flat butt. just like me. Uh, I put a little yeah. bit of hibiscus rose syrup in it. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but we'll find out. Why am I always not center? What is wrong with? It's partly my me? fault. It looks different yeah. on, on in OBS than it would to you. Yeah, I'm judging it based on what the live feed is. It's yeah, because yeah. I can't see through Discord. Yeah, so I so, don't know until you do, folks. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about today, guys, but the main thing yeah. we got to talk about is there's all these spring sales going on. Yes. Uh, spring has sprung. Uh, it's that time of the year and your gracious console makers are giving us a bunch of deals on a bunch of games. Well, two of them are, and one is being Nintendo about it. <laughs> Before we get into that. Underscore, thank you for the 51 months. Spoopy girl, thank you for the 13 months. Happy lucky 13. Glad you guys are okay with all the craziness that's happened earlier. Yeah, Brooklyn was a little yeah. wild today, but we're all good. Uh, Gel Long, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's talk about some deals. Yes. Uh, where where would you like to start? Um, well, so PlayStation. Uh, I'm sorry. So Nintendo doesn't really have many deals. They're, they're, you explained this to me before. They don't really have an official sale. The publishers are doing their own sales. Yes, I mean there are a couple of games here and there that are on sale. Like the Lego games are on sale. Uh, G- the GTA trilogy is on sale. But it's not, those are not part of like a big, you know, a big promoted sale. Okay. Uh, Alex Publishers are doing promoted sales, specifically Bandai Namco, Sega, uh, 11 Bit Studios, and Ali Ali World. Oh, I need, I need to, I need to get that. Yeah. Both so why, the so regular why and the rad edition. So then why don't we just sale. talk about Nintendo then? Because we already just started with it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get that out of the way. So yeah, starting off, uh, the first promoted sale on the Nintendo eShop is Ali Ali World. Uh, both versions, uh, the regular and the rad edition, are on sale for twenty percent off. What do so I that means you get the original edition? for? Uh, it just makes you that much more rad. <laughs> Uh, Whenever you, get you Ali do Ali a World. there's a guitar solo. Oh, good. <laughs> you get Ali Ali World, first story expansion. There's a story expansion already? This game just came out. Uh, <laughs> Vo- Void Riders, containing an 
entirely new biome levels, characters, gameplay, and customization unlocks. Oh, it's coming in the summer. Okay, so th this one's not even okay. out yet. So you get two right. story expansions that aren't out yet. Mm -hmm. You also get the Close Encounters skate deck. Okay, uh, I don't need that. I think I'll just get the regular. Uh, the regular version is twenty four bucks. Uh, if you want the rad edition, then that is thirty four bucks. I'm going to get the regular edition right now. Today's going to be shopping right. with 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 the wolf. Bros. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up is the Bandai Namco spring sale. Uh, if you like weeb shit, this is the sale for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of Dragon Ball Fighter Z stuff uh the main game is 84 percent off you can get it for 10 bucks whoa that's that's a good deal that is that is a good uh, deal. yeah or you can get the fighters fighters the edition which i think is the deluxe edition for 1424 again that is 85 percent off that game normally retails on switch for 95 dollars on on the on the uh on the each on the nintendo.com slash store page it says spring savings are here on select games yes oh i thought you were saying well, that like it wasn't said, a specific sale well the what i'm trying to say is microsoft and sony are specifically promoting a site-wide spring sale nintendo isn't if you go to the eShop, there's no like spring sale banner or anything like that it's or even on the website it doesn't say like it. spring sale that, that's the one all right well maybe spring i don't know what i'm talking about select games there it is well, where did you Clutch. see that on the homepage? it was nintendo.com slash store the first thing and then okay pikachu and eevee clutch style console case this is pretty sick this is a cool little pocketbook <laughs> thing that's pretty freaking awesome Um, I don't, yeah, I don't need Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I don't think I, I'm going to get the, the 84% off Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Well, not even, just, let me just give you one more Dragon Ball Fighter Z. The Ultimate Edition, which normally right. retails for $110, is only 17 bucks. Whoa. That sounds like bullshit, though. I feel like, <laughs> hold on. Let's go to Amazon. Dragon Ball Fighter Z Nintendo Switch. Okay. There's no way it's sixty dollars. Well, remember, this is Switch digital games, and those you know rarely go on sale, let alone have good sales. It's thirty bucks. Or For the digital or the physical? 60. Uh, that is physical. I bet I can look at yeah. digital. Uh, there is no option for digital. You can get an Xbox One download code, which is currently there. You go. I'm just saying, I don't think th these games. That game's been out a while. I don't see that game actually. Like Bandai, I think is fudging the numbers. These games aren't that much off. You know, like they they definitely are just always on sale because they're old by now. Well, they may be old, but Fighter Z is still very popular, especially in you know tournament fighting community, and. Call what you want. Going from one hundred and ten dollars to seventeen is a pretty big jump. I don't so believe if you, you missed that. It's boat, still popular. <laughs> I don't believe if you, you missed the boat on Fighter Z. This is your chance. Did you mention Taiko no Tatsujin Drum and Fun? Normally fifty dollars, no, now ten dollars. I uh, highly doubt one. I played. I paid fifty dollars for that game. I highly doubt that. Here's one for you, Bob. My Hero One One's Justice is only nine bucks. Oh my god, I love My Hero. That game, not so much. <laughs> I mean, nine bucks, maybe. Maybe the game was like not that bad. Not bad. Yeah. What about uh, God Eater? Yeah. That looks like a good game. <laughs> yeah, I've heard God Eater is fun. Also nine bucks. And before anyone gets mad at us, uh, the One Piece games are on sale. <laughs> switch one piece pirate warriors 3 deluxe edition six bucks uh pirate warriors 4 is 15 bucks and the character pass is also 15 bucks okay that's enough weep shit 
what else do we got yeah. here? Uh, Sega! Next Yay! is the Sega sale. There might be a lot of uh, shit in the Sega sale, though. <laughs> probably, it's mostly Sonic crap. All right, uh, good. Yep. The Ultimate Sonic Bundle uh, is 30 bucks. That gets you uh, Team Sonic Racing, a good game. Sonic Mania, a very good game. And Sonic Forces, a game. <laughs> uh, there is also the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. That's not part of Switch Online. Uh, and that's only 12 bucks. So if you want to own the games, this is the one to get. Okay, I, I, I have some beef right now. Almost okay. all of the Bandai games are showing their original retail price. Yeah. Whereas the Sonic games, like Sonic Forces, Sonic Forces did not retail at $20. <laughs> no. But that's probably what it currently sells for now. They probably right. lowered the price. Yeah. I'm sa- I'm calling bullshit on Bandai's part. I don't think all of these games cost this much. I think they're fudging the numbers. <laughs> I, th- I think before the sale happens, they put everything at full retail and then did the sale. That's what I think happened. Right. But uh, so Sonic Colors was the Switch version was broken at launch. Did they ever fix that? It's yes. Thirty one forty nine now. I don't know. I know they were fixing it. I don't know if they finished fixing it. I played Sonic- it on PS4 and it was fine. So Sonic Mania for ten bucks is an okay deal. I feel like it's. I feel like we've seen that deal before. Yeah, we've definitely seen that deal before, and it's just Sonic Mania, not uh, the Encore pack. Right. That gets you Mighty and uh, Ray the Flying Squirrel. Yeah, we want that. Which I, do, which I don't think is on sale. And that would be a major uh, f- disappointment. That sucks. Because at, thi- at this point, you should either be bundling them together, or whenever Sonic Mania goes on sale, the Encore Pass also goes on sale there's 3ds games on here yes there's still time <laughs> that is crazy um yeah. do, do we have a story i just saw a story right before we went live uh i don't oh yeah no we have it we have I a story it... about 3ds games yeah <laughs> yeah a <laughs> um, system that won't die I don't, uh, yeah, I don't see anything else that I would like out of here. A bunch of Sega Ages collection games are on sale, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, so that the Sega will... Ages, those those are cool because they're in, they're individual games, but they have a lot of modern enhancements, like um, like save states, and uh, for Sonic 1 and 2, for example, they added his drop dash from Sonic Mania, and um, like Fantasy Zone, uh, Fantasy Star, rather, they added like a map screen. To help you navigate all the dungeons and stuff better. Yeah, if you've never played Sonic One, this is probably the way to play Sonic One. Don't just yeah. don't just play Sonic One. It's not that good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Sega Ages the Sega Ages versions of these games have like a lot of good quality of life improvements that I think mm-hmm. are worth checking out. So yeah, uh, if you if you want to play this, this is a good time to buy some of those Sega Ages stuff. Space Harrier two seventy nine. Yeah. They're pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, okay, what else do we got? Uh, uh, Eleven Bit Studios. Who the hell is that? This is uh, this is a lot of indie stuff. <laughs> uh, Moon, one Moonlight of is the only one that, that I know of. Uh, so this War of Mine, I actually bought That's during the here? sale. Yeah, it's two bucks right now. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. doesn't that support Ukraine right now or something? No, they did like does it? Did, they Wait, did uh no ukraine's the one we want to support <laughs> yes ukraine we want to support ukraine they did <laughs> they guess. did a whole thing recently uh where like all of the sales went to something oh that's nice no i got confused because i saw and i'm not going to mention names i was watching a youtube video and there was an ad in it for a game published by 1c entertainment which is a russian company oh and i'm like oh was Oh, I hope you had that planned back in last year. I could have sworn they did a thing. I don't know. They, uh, they they, apparently, have. this I mean, War of Mine did a lot of charity benefit stuff. Like, well, since I, the game I mean, came out. That makes sense, because this War of Mine is all about you play as refugees trying to survive in the middle of a war. Right. 
and right. like you have to do some pretty dark shit in order to survive. So it would make sense that they would do charities. Uh, it was in a bundle for humanitarian relief. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on. What's this? Uh. Yeah, they 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 did some sort of thing to support Ukraine. So I I don't know if this counts towards that, but uh, I mean, I'm sure. So any support for them is good. It's two bucks. Yeah. Fuck it. It's two bucks. You know why not? It's basically your. It's a demo at that point. Yeah, they've given enough charity, so support that developer. Yeah. We like them. Yeah. Uh, that's mm -hmm. it. That's the whole sale. That sucked. <laughs> Yeah, it like I said, it's very small. <laughs> they, they, there are other games that are on sale, um, like uh, like I said of the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, some of the Lego games, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and its DLC are on sale on Switch. Uh, the House of the Dead remake is on sale, but not by much. Do they uh, have, do they have also, docs like, on? It? They have docs in stock. It looks like. This never happens. There you Refurbished go. docks, forty and bucks. Some, uh, physical games are on sale through the store. Like uh, Mario Odyssey and Legend of, and Breath of the Wild are both forty bucks, but everybody watching this probably owns them already. Oh, those are uh, never on sale. I know, but it's just physical, not the digital versions. That's pretty good, though. Still. Same thing. Same thing with uh, Splatoon Two, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Metopia, Animal Crossing. Oh no, Animal Crossing's not on sale. Never mind. Screw them. You can get a whole ass uh Animal Crossing dock for forty bucks. It's it's not any oh, more there expensive you go. than the regular dock. That's pretty friggin' awesome. And it's 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 in stock right now. So if you need an extra dock, that's the one to get. You need to get a charger though. So it ends yeah. up uh not being that much cheaper. But it's a charger you can get for, for uh twenty bucks. Make yeah. sure you get the official Nintendo one. Don't cheap out on that. Yeah, of course. Uh, anyway, uh, so I guess that's I guess that's Nintendo K kind of bunk over there. I think they're gonna get yeah. uh, uh, beat out by the other two guys. And you know who know knowing Nintendo tomorrow is when they announce their big uh, spring <laughs> sale. True. When we miss it, that's how they work. Yeah, maybe the publishers started, and then they're gonna go with the uh, the other guys. Yeah. Uh. Before we move on to PlayStation, let's say a special thank you to Seasoul for the 18 months and also Rainy Day Hideout. Thanks for the five whole gifted subs. I very much appreciate that. And Dante Mira, thank you for the 32 months. Woo, 32 months with the Wild Brothers. Thank you, Dante. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. It's PlayStation time. What am I buying okay. today? PlayStation's got some decent... They also have the trilogy on sale, the Grand but for more than it is on Switch Online. That's interesting. The Grand Theft Auto trilogy. Uh, yes. 40 bucks. Well, you know what? Honestly, it's shittier on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. true. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, PS4 and PS5 versions, 30 bucks. Or if you want the deluxe version that comes with the remake of Spider-Man 1... Uh, that'll run you 50 bucks. Grand Theft Auto 5, the premium edition, is on sale for half off, except that it is the PS4 version. Yes. That is so dumb. That is very dumb. Uh, what else is there? The Ghost of, Shushi Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut PS5 version is 50 bucks. The PS4 version is 40 bucks. That's not a good deal. No. I feel like you can get that at like Best Buy for that much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I forgot that these games retail for 70. I know. Like I'm looking at Returnal is 50 bucks right now on sale. I'm like, that's not a deal. And then it's $20 off. So like, oh, I guess it is. Yeah. These games are just expensive. Ratchet and Clank are ripped apart. Yeah. That's a really good game. And it's relatively new. Uh, 29% off. Okay. Yeah. It's 49.69. These are still expensive games. Yeah. Uh on the next page we got 
Oh, see, I have Horizon Zero Dawn, so it's not gonna tell me how much it is. It's ten dollars. Uh, well, it's fifty. It's fifty percent off. So it's it's okay. from twenty dollars to 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 nine ninety nine, which is okay. still not that great. No. Uh, Mortal Kombat Eleven. The whole the whole thing is fifteen bucks. Uh, a way out is seven fifty. Bob likes that game. It's a very good game. Uh, but now I'd probably suggest just playing uh uh. uh what, what's the name of the game? Stick to two two together. It takes it takes two. Takes two. Play that. Play that one instead. Uh, I currently have this in my cart. Resident Evil Three Remake. It is how much is it? Fifteen ninety nine. That is a good yeah. deal. Does it say? For some reason, for me, it says Last of Us Remastered unavailable. Um, uh, no. Last of Us Remastered is fifty percent off. It is nine ninety nine instead of twenty dollars. Weird. That I, I feel like I've I seen have... for that price before. Oh, I have Last of Us Remastered, but why does it say unavailable? It might. Well, I don't know. Did you ever get the whole uh, the like PlayStation Five Ambassador games? Didn't you want to like sign no, into my I, PlayStation to do that or something? Yeah, I never, I never signed into your PlayStation. Okay, but then again, like most of those games came to PS Plus anyway. I, I'm signed out right now so that I could see all the stuff. Okay, uh, but I feel like if I sign in, I'm like certain games are gonna show up like that. I that yeah. I own them because of that ambassador yeah. program or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, because uh, I just saw a game that I know I didn't buy, and it says that I own it. Oh, it was UFC 4. Oh, I, did, yeah, I know I didn't buy UFC 4. Yeah. You definitely need to play that one. Yeah. Uh, on the next page, you have the Lego Harry Potter collection for only $4 and Injustice 2 for only $3. That's a very good yeah. deal. Injustice 2, fantastic game. A lot I, of fun. I find myself watching the cutscenes from that very today. Today I did. I yeah. watched a couple of cutscenes yeah. from, from They're Injustice. very good. They're very good. It's very fun. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, let's see what else. What is here. Green problem... Hell? <laughs> I, I that is a Misfits song. I know that, but I don't think this has anything to do with the Misfits song. Green Hell is a sweltering struggle for survival in the Amazonian rainforest. Clinging to life, the player is set on a journey of durability as the effects of solitude wear heavy not only on the body but also the mind how long can you survive <laughs> against the dangers of the unknown okay whatever you say there you go one of the problems i have with like when they do the big sales like this is they mix in dlc and virtual currency yeah it's like very annoying. next next to ace combat seven for ten dollars, for nine dollars rather, you get uh, Black Desert, uh, eleven thousand fifty pearls for uh, eighty bucks. For all you Black Desert fans out there, <laughs> um, I just like that game for the character creator. It's got a pretty beefy <laughs> character creator. I didn't know there was a. I don't like this whole deluxe edition garbage, where you see the game. That, this is how they get you. This is how they get you. It, it is. Six, That's how they got me with Wolfenstein. Sixty twenty nine for Demon Souls, but it's the digital deluxe edition. So people yeah. are gonna look at, go to buy Demon Souls, and they're gonna buy that one by accident because they're gonna think that that's the one. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead Online. Why, why is that ten dollars? Why I thought that was is that not? Does, well, I guess it comes that with the game. Yeah, it comes with the game. But if, I guess you don't need to buy the game. You could just play Red Dead Online. Yeah. They're really... Apparently Red Dead Online like is not doing as well as GTA Online. And like that's been a problem with Rockstar. That sucks. Because I used to, to actually play the original uh, Red Dead Redemption online. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I don't yeah. think I touched Red Dead Online. I didn't touch it for this the yeah. second game. I mean, I we barely played the second. I mean, I barely played the second game. I got I, I got burnt out very quickly, game, and I'm like, I, I I shouldn't have I shouldn't have beat it. <laughs> uh, if you do get Injustice Two for only three bucks, you can get the Ultimate Pack for six bucks, more than twice the price of the actual game. But you get all the DLC characters. That means you get, uh, who do you get? You get the Atom. You get the Red Hood. You get uh, Hellboy. You get the Ninja Turtles. 
you know, the classic DC Comics characters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What about the original Elden Ring Ninja Gaiden? Uh, what's yeah. the Masters Collection come with? Is it all three games? It's all three games, yeah. For... Ninja Ga- Ga- Gaiden, is that Omega? Is that an Omega symbol? Sigma. Sigma. Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. So here's the thing about about this collection. It concludes Ninja Gaiden Sigma and Sigma 2. Those are essentially uh, PlayStation ports of the Xbox and Xbox 360 games because the guy who made the original Ninja Gaiden games, Itagaki, like, did not want to develop for Sony at all. But uh, Tecmo said, well, we're going to port the game over anyway. <laughs> so it's a slightly different version of the game. Uh, and then Ninja Gaiden 3, The Razor's Edge was made without Itagaki's input and apparently is not... No, I take that back. The original Ninja Gaiden 3 was not good. Razor's Edge was a Wii U exclusive and they had the Nintendo money to polish it up and make it better. Uh, That's I what that was. All of those games are impossible. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Unravel 2, five bucks. That's a pretty good deal. That's good. That's a good deal. It's a good indie game. Uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut Digital Deluxe Edition. Uh, PlayStation Five Digital Deluxe Edition. Forty nine seventy nine. So ten dollars off. Yeah. Um. Anything uh, else? I think. Uh, yo, Ghost Recon Extract. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Rainbow Six Extraction is already twenty one ninety nine. <laughs> game just came out. Well, if you have PlayStation Plus, it's twenty bucks. So you save that Holy extra two dollars. Um, I think I think we're good here. There's nothing else. Uh, I yeah. think that's worth even talking about. If if we miss something, let us know in the chat. I will. I'll mention real quick the Metro Saga of all all three games is currently fifteen bucks, and like the third one just came out. Uh, let's move on to Xbox. Our buddy Xbox over here. Okay. Uh, they do the same shit where they'll mix in DLC and virtual currency into the lineup. Um. But I'll give them this. If you have any interest in Halo, now's the time to get it. Because, like, all the Halo games on sa- are on sale, and they are very good deals. Yeah, this website's very strange. If, if, yeah. if, I, if I have the window too tiny, it squishes all of the games together. Yeah, yeah, I'm always <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, yeah. So I all the Halo games are on Game Pass. So... Yes. If these... I mean, the best deal is to just get Game Pass. Right. But like, 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 why would you pay? So Forza Horizon 5 is $60. It's on sale for $50.99. Why would you pay $50.99 when you could pay a dollar for Game Pass? Right. Or, or like $8 for the month. Plow through the game and then, and then just, just drop it. Yeah. Maybe if you play a lot yeah. of it, that's the only game you care about. Like that makes sense for like Halo, but even Halo Online is free to play. So like, right? It, a lot of this, <laughs> if, if yeah, it's I on Game did. Pass, it's not going to make much sense. I guess I didn't think of that. Game Pass really did screw everything up for everybody. <laughs> well, game something Pass not is on too Game Pass of a deal. I keep saying Mortal Kombat and Injustice. You can get both games, the deluxe edition of both games, on Xbox for twenty five bucks. That's a very good deal. That's a very good deal. Wait, isn't it on Game Pass though? I don't think I don't think either of those are on Game Pass. Um I'm checking. I'm checking. Uh Mortal Kombat uh, 11 is on Game Pass. Oh. Uh I can't tell if Injustice is. Where is it? Injustice Probably 2. Not. Oh, this is Black Lightning. I feel like it is. Do you get uh, all the DLC with this pack? Because uh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's sick. Because then you get Ninja Turtles and stuff. Yeah. Injustice two. Uh, also on sale is Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a very good game. That's thirty bucks. Uh, the Tomb Raider collection, the modern trilogy, which is also on uh, PS4, twenty bucks. That's a good. That's a good Injustice deal. Two is also on Game Pass. Oh, 
this deal is looking worse all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ori and the Little uh, Wisps, which is on Game Pass, nine eighty nine. Red Dead Redemption 2 23 dollars That's not a bad deal. I don't know if this is a good deal or not. Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 7, uh, both deluxe editions for $52. Bucks. That? So it's bo- both oh, games, it's both you games. get all the okay. DLC. You get all the DLC with them, but I mean, Resident Evil 7 is pretty old at this point. Farming Simulator, forty four ninety nine. There you go. Uh, a a mit mit Morthos says, I'd argue that games don't stay on Game Pass. So whatever, whenever you can't pay for Game Pass at the time, you'll still be able to play it. As for Xbox owned games, I don't know if they stay on longer or if they're always on Game Pass. I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's why I was saying, like, if you plan on playing a game for, like, more than a month, then I understand wanting to own it. But most of the games here are going to be games that you're going to want to just plow through and then just, just that's it. Uh, the only game I could imagine that you would want to play for a long time, which has like multiplayer and stuff, are the Halo games, which are A, never going to leave Game Pass because they're Halo, and B, mm-hmm. freaking Halo Infinite is free to play online. You don't even need Game Pass. Yeah. I think the Microsoft first party games do stay on Game Pass, um, but you know there is something to be said about having the game when it's not on Game Pass. Yeah, like you know, you even if you are subscri- it, yeah. Well, even if even if you get it digitally, if you have it and it leaves Game Pass, you'll still have access to it. Right. So, uh, one thing I should bring up that it's on sale, and I think we should all act on it now. Uh, Fast and Furious Crossroads is <laughs> currently sixteen dollars, uh, and that will be uh, being delisted fairly soon. So, everyone should go out and get that game. Uh, for no. the family, no family. I I, I, family. Disag- I disagree. Family, don't go. Family. Don't don't do that. <laughs> Game's a trash game. Family. <laughs> um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, fifteen ninety nine, which I also think is a Game Pass game. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say it on the website. Yeah, that's a game I have to play through. I liked the, the very little bit that I played of that game. Is that the... That's not the 8-bit one, right? No, that's uh, Curse of the Moon. Okay. Uh, I have that. That one's good. That was very good also. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I think that I think that's it. I think we're... Oh, Control, eight ninety nine. but also... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it is not a Game Pass game. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think... Uh, I think that's about... All we could do. Chris Tales. Didn't yeah. I play the demo of this? I did. It is. Oh, it's on Game Pass. <laughs> Twenty dollars though. If yeah. you don't have Game Pass. Uh, Cyberpunk twenty nine ninety nine. That was on sale last week at Best Buy for five dollars. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. They released an uh, a recent update. I heard it's still not yeah. that great. I, I, I've I heard. heard- it's- they, they they keep doing reviews of of cyberpunk like they keep re-reviewing yeah. it whenever there's an update and uh these outlets are saying it's not it's it they keep saying it's not much better every time they release an update however really because our I, friend greg says it's great and i should get it <laughs> i've i've heard it is substantially better maybe not still maybe not anywhere close to being what it should be but it is a much better game than when it launched I just, I just don't think it's the type of game that I would like anyway. So even if it would, even am, if it wasn't broken, I feel like I just wouldn't like it anyway. I'm willing to give that game another shot, but it is currently at the bottom of my list. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. I think that's all the sale yes. stuff. I only ended up buying Ali Ali World, which looks like it's on sale on everything right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go through again and see. 
Uh, I, I think I'm going to pick up because I have the Master Chief collection, but I don't have uh, ODST and Reach because I got it before they put those games in there and it feels incomplete and I want to fix that. Um, and then I'll probably just like look around and see what else is there. There was another game. Oh, and the Resident Evil 3 remake since it's only 15 bucks. Uh, Coronary Jump says Arkham Collection is 85% off on PlayStation and 70% off on Xbox. Yeah, I think it's like nine bucks on both systems. I feel like if there's any that... back catalog games that you've been thinking about getting, they're probably on sale right now. Yeah, now is now is 100% the time. Especially if you want it digitally. If you want it yeah. physically, I mean, there's always going to be sales uh, on older stuff at big box retailers a lot of times. Here's a you like a buy one, get one I or have. something. I have Time Splitters 2 for the original Xbox. I okay. have the disc for it. So I can okay. just pop it in my Xbox and I can play it. It's on sale right now for, I think, two bucks. Oh. Do I just pay the two bucks and have yeah. it digitally? or? Okay. I think $2 is a good fee for never having to get up and put a disc in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, would, I would pay that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Any games you guys got? Reach and ODSC are on Game Pass for uh, Master Chief Master Collection. Chief yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't literally, have Literally every Halo game is on yeah. Master Chief <laughs> is on Game Pass. Um, is Steam games on sale? There's always a Steam sale. There's always <laughs> a Steam sale, yeah. I finished my purchase of the Steam Deck, by the way. I saw that. Uh, I don't know when it's coming still. Oh, that's whack. Yeah. Also, I bought a Scuff controller yesterday, like their version yeah. of the Elite controller. Right. It ended up costing me $290. Why? I don't know. It was insane. And Jeez. I did it anyway. Unbelievable. Wait, uh, wait. So... Yes. It's for two hundred and ninety dollars. That means you got add-ons, right? Because there's in a scuff controller like only two hundred. I got the uh, so so it's it's a regular Xbox controller that they already modified. So right. it's it's not like I get, well I guess I did get I got add-ons, but they're like just the add-ons I got are different colored triggers and the ring around the thumbstick are different colors. I didn't get like physical add-ons. I got the the. The most expensive pro, which is uh, uh, hair triggers. That's really it. Um, yeah. And I just added on some colors, and that's really it. I didn't get, like, any oh. fancy customizations or anything. You got the Instinct? Yeah, the Instinct Pro. That's the Instinct Pro. Okay, the Instinct Pro starts at 200 Yeah, and then you, and then you get add-ons. Every little thing, they nickel and dime you. And then also Sounds there like is it, yeah. tax and shipping. So it's not free shipping. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. So all things considered, it ends up be it ended up costing me around two hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah. I also, my it. Steam Deck cost me mm -hmm. five hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Five hundred seventy-five dollars, including my little five dollar deposit. Because you got the uh, the mid tier version. Correct. I got the. Okay. 256 gig yeah 256 yeah gig. and people you know online were being like hey you got that one i've just got this small one and i just put a i'm gonna put an ssd in it i didn't at yeah. the time when it this dropped it wasn't clear if you were going to be able to put an ssd in the 64 gigabyte one yeah the rumor was that it was only going to be available in the 256 gigabyte one mm -hmm. if you know if i was buying this just for me I would have totally just gotten the 64 gigabyte one and put a freaking micro SD card in there and called it a day. But I'm doing this to make a review on it. So I have to be able to put right. more games on it and stuff. Um, but I suspect that I'll probably, if I want to run emulators, they're just going on a freaking micro SD card because the micro yeah. SD card will, will run just fine. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see wh what my shipping information is for the Steam Deck. I can't. Oh, there is none. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. Yeah. So I, since we're talking about expensive things we bought and we don't know when they're coming, I pre-ordered the NECA made collector's edition of the Ninja Turtles 2 action figures. 
oh. it's a four pack with all four turtles based on their look from the second movie. Uh, and it comes in a box that looks like the old VHS box. Isn't it expensive? It is a hundred and seventy dollars without shipping. Honestly, that's not bad. It's not as bad as I thought it's it not. Would be. It's not. Uh, and I my I accept my credit cards are paid off monthly, so I'm good. Uh, it's just it it hurt <laughs> buying that, and uh, they sent out an email saying when it's gonna ship, sometime in Q1 next year. Oh my god, that's so late. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they had this already. I thought this was a thing that was out already. The first movie they did. Uh, Those are the ones I really wanted. Those are the ones I really wanted. But they're very hard to find for a good price. Because okay. everybody knew to just buy them and then flip them on the black market. Okay. So, so you expect these to also you be people. bought and flipped. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Are these also figures, especially... die cast? No, they're not die no. cast. I thought they were like no. metal or something. No, though you're thinking of SH Figure Arts. Ah, oh, okay. Those are metal. Yeah, no, these are these are plastic, but you know they're high quality. and They look like they do in the movie. So, mm -hmm. NECA figures always like get bought and like flipped for the stupidest prices. It's and and they they feed into it. They perpetuate the cycle. So <laughs> they're bad people too. And here I am waiting for my toys. Anywho. <laughs> Uh, special thank you again to Jin Wong for 15 months. It, it, it been a working, oh, let me get my, let me get my friggin' reading glasses on for this one. It been a working a lot, just stopping by to show some love. Thank you, Jin Wong for thank 15 you. months. Thank you. Rocket Valix for 21 months. Hello, guys. Hope you're all. You hope you're well. I can't wait to go to conventions again. I'm also still trying to find a PlayStation 5, and none of my local game stops have one. Adorama has them pretty frequently. Really? In the city, if you can go into the city. I, I had a Series X in my Amazon cart for like an hour, <laughs> and I almost got it, but I chickened out. <laughs> Just get a series yes. X. I could not just screw buy. it. Just screw it. Maybe. But I still have a lot of disc games I would want to play. Oh, okay. Well then. Well then. Series Series S is will be the kids console. They can <laughs> play with that. Um also just follow Wario64 on Twitter. There's frequently uh uh deals. I know. Or, that's, or not that's deals, where I but found you out frequently about it. see like the new consoles go up on sale. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Xboxes are easier to get nowadays because my definitely. boss just got one. Yeah, I see. And I he's, see he's them go up all the time. He's doing the uh, the payment plan that Microsoft has, where like you pay it off and they give you Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says it's worth it. Uh, Mecha Dragon X for ten months. Sorry for not subscribing last month, bros. Sub subscribe to someone else by mistake. <laughs> Y'all should make a dedicated <laughs> video reviewing the Sonic Two movie. Anyways, great podcast as always. Thank you, Mecha Dragon. You don't have to listen. You don't have to subscribe every month. We appreciate it, though. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the Sonic movie. <sighs> Me neither. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to. I don't think I'm yeah. going to the movies anytime soon. Same. I mean, normally I would have gone, but I saw Batman. I saw my one movie for the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frank something thanks for the subscription <laughs> unshaven relic thank you for the two months hey bob your ad in your last video cracked me up thanks for your awesome videos thank you unshaven relic i appreciate it was that the roman yeah ad or that was okay. the penis stuff probably yeah yeah mm -hmm. every time wood brings up g fuel i like to bring up roman because he doesn't want to do <laughs> as you should roman. Yeah. as you should <laughs> You should become as synonymous with Roman as he is with G Fuel. Yes. <laughs> um. Anyway, I was like, "Listen, man, if I can help just one guy, you know, yeah, then it's worth it." Also, if you hear on Twitch, if you type in exclamation point sponsors, I think, uh, you get a list of all of our uh all of the sponsors for the 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 the, the main channel that we, that has like coupon codes and stuff um 
And though all of that stuff also helps support the channel. If you're thinking about getting any, you know, what do you call it? Getting any liquid IV? You need a new couch? You need a new uh, mattress? Do you maybe need some trade coffee? Hey, maybe you realize you have a problem and you need some Roman. You can use uh, <laughs> you can use our affiliate codes for any of that stuff. Uh, anyway. Uh, I didn't put this in order. Let's talk about Nintendo. Uh, let's talk about these 3DS games first. Okay. Uh, where did you? I I moved it just now. Okay. It's not showing up. Oh, there it is. Hello. Yeah, it looks like Nintendo has been reprinting 3DS retail games for one final hurrah. Whoa. Uh, the 3DS was officially discontinued back in September 2020 with hardware production ending for a system that couldn't match the dizzying heights of its predecessor, the DS, but nevertheless maintains a favorite, uh, remains a favorite for plenty of Nintendo fans. Uh, there are definitely a few members of the 3DS uh, fan club among the Nintendo Life staff, uh, though the only remaining hardware to buy will largely be, will be a legacy stock. We received an interesting tip from a community member. Uh, highlighting that there are there appears to be various games, first and third party, getting reprints in Europe in recent months. Titles that were thought to be out of print were naturally seeing their prices increase on platforms like eBay, but some online retailers have had stock in, have had stock in recent times, very useful for filling out collections or picking up games that were originally missed. As you can see in some of the tweets and images below, there are notice there are notable indicators that their reprints from 2021. One sign is a narrower now narrow, narrower nailed it game case similar to those in Japan, while subtle adjustments to packaging update product information. Uh, this is related to UK and the EU in particular. Interesting. Yeah. So. You know it's a reprint with the slimmer game case and um, adjustments to product information. Uh, some of the some of the games included, uh, according to this tweet from Pikiru, is uh, Dragon Quest uh, Seven and Eight, Fire Emblem Awakening, Bravely Default, Majora's Mask, uh, Devil Survivor Two, Stella Glow, Kirby Planet Ro uh, Robot, and Luigi's Mansion. Robobot. Robobot. Sorry, I want to. I want to uh, play. I want to play that. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I've been interested in it. Uh, I'm a little disappointed with how easy Kirby games are, though. <laughs> yeah. That game looks really good. I, I, I played a little bit of it, and I haven't gotten to where you actually get a RoboBot yet. But uh, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll play a little more of it. Uh, meanwhile, a New York-based independent store uh, highlighted that, to their knowledge, production has what? ended on 3DS cartridges. Uh, which seems to which seems very likely at this stage. The uh, New Games New York. Store... Yeah. Okay. They are at every convention we go to. Yes, they are. Uh, no more cartridges would be produced from Nintendo, but this is where indie stores like Video Games New York step up to keep the system live forever. We are stocking up on all the games uh, from the last reprints. So. Yeah, why are they saying that physical cartridges are done? So they're saying like this is the last set of prints for these yes. games, I guess. Yes. And this seems to be, I guess like this specific re-release seems to be specific to Europe. The UK mm -hmm. and the EU in particular. Um, the Nintendo of America is probably done publishing carts. Uh, for Why this do... region. Oh, this is from this tweet's from March seventeenth. Also, how do they know that? Three DS physical carts are done. How do they know that? I mean, they probably have a distributor that told them. Very weird. I feel like that would that would have been big news. Yeah. Well, also, I feel like it would have been something done earlier. Um. You know, I thought I had it in here, but I don't. Uh, hey, if you got a 3DS, don't worry about uh, getting any games. <laughs> you can just uh, do a little googly, watch a little video, and you can get any game you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so none of this really matters. You don't need to. You don't need to get. You don't need to struggle and, and find all these games. 
you can just do a little uh do a little quick little thing and get whatever game you want on your 3ds and boom there you go of course support your developers when you can yeah uh, absolutely but when they make it hard uh fuck them do do what you gotta do <laughs> do what you gotta do uh okay what else do we got here oh oh, oh wait hold on while i was looking at that uh mm -hmm. i was looking at those tweets i found this tweet biblically accurate nintendo 3ds <laughs> you know how usually it's like an a, a biblically accurate angel it's got like a million eyes well this has yeah a million screens and the friggin <laughs> like thumbstick attachment and all that the, the, the bathtub yeah <laughs> the bathtub good times <laughs> Um. Well, anyway, picky gamer. Thanks for the 16 months. Keep it up, guys. Thanks, dude. And Scott the Sloth, thank you for the Prime subscription. And Frank Uchiha, thank you for gifting us up. I appreciate it. Uh, what's this about Mario Golf coming to Switch Online? Why well, did it have a question uh, Mario mark at the end? <laughs> oh, um, I copied that from a reference link, and the reference link was like. 10 lines long so i shortened uh -huh. it and i guess i left the question mark by mistake oh i thought that was like mario golf on switch online <laughs> <laughs> no mario golf is coming to switch online it's coming april 15th so this week yay i might i might play this on twitch i'm i'm uh i'm a fan of these types of games yes uh is this the best mario golf game Maybe? I don't know. I really liked the uh, 3DS one. I don't know. I I don't know if I should say I really liked yeah. it. Uh, it was uh, good, but uh, it was very frustrating. This one might be the right. best one. Yeah, I feel like the Mario sports games have like been in a lull because it, like whenever like when tennis and golf came out, everyone's like super excited for it. Then they came out, everyone's like, eh. there's always some dumb shit. Is the problem. Yeah. There's always some dumb shit that they throw in or something. And I was excited for Mario Golf on the Switch, and then uh, there was a lot of dumb shit. <laughs> so I didn't uh, like it that much. Um, I'm way more excited for Nintendo Switch Sports Golf. Yeah. But that's... I've heard, like, they've been doing a lot of, like, the previews for Switch uh, Sports, and everyone's saying, like, this is the true successor to Wii Sports. It is that fun. It is that good. It is. Uh, from what I played wow. from the playtest, it's incredible. I think that comes out next week. Mm -hmm. I'm a little disappointed. Wait, really? Next I'm, week? Uh, I think so. Oh, no! April 29th. Thank God. Okay, because next oh. week I'm going to be at PAX. So the week after, I'll be able to friggin' play Nintendo Switch Sports. That's good right. news. Also, I think when I go to PAX, I'm not even going to bring my Switch. I think I'm going to bring my 3DS. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, big man. Or maybe my analog pocket, and I'll, I'll for my Game Boy camera and stuff. Go. Um, we're dropping frames every once in a while. I don't know what to do about that. It says zero point five percent of frames, so it can't be. It's not that much. Yeah. Uh, Odin question mark? Maybe I I uh I do very much like my Odin, but the 3DS is great too. the The, the thing is with 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 uh, emulators is that most of the games you want to play are like you know um what snes and lower <laughs> so like <laughs> so like basically any emulator can run those and i mean yeah. having 3ds hardware is incredible um but yeah the odin can play everything else i mean n64 yeah. games sometimes i would like to play that disqu disquiet Di dis disquieted collector steam deck dot 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 if i get it in time sure i'll bring the steam deck will i want to probably not because it's fucking huge and i like to travel yeah. like <laughs> so i don't know about that did you get sent a play date uh no i bought one uh but there's no sh that's what i that is what i got confused with the steam deck the play date i i I, I need shipping info on the play date. That I think is coming soon. Yeah, yeah well, uh, so, okay, the embargo is up next week. Okay. So I'd imagine that they start shipping once the embargo's up. Right. Uh, 
Hey, speaking of BB Retro, who's in the chat right now, uh, this is a good time to bring up uh, some news. Um, we're in a book. Uh, yeah. Well, as, long as, I, as long as I hit the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Retro Dodo is releasing a book called A Handheld History. Uh, and it is on... Uh, it was on it's being crowdfunded right now i don't know what what service it is uh i sub, i i contributed to the crowdfunding campaign so <laughs> i don't i don't remember but uh you go to a, a you go to a handheldhistory.com it's a book where people like ashens jason bradbury elliot uh from uh, retro future kevin kenson a little guy named bob wolf and even retro game core uh, all writing like like uh, chapters in the book. I'm getting the Nintendo Switch chapter. Am I allowed to say that? Mm. Um, and BB Retro, I believe, is doing all the photography. There you go. I just linked it in the chat. Um, okay. So take that, eighth grade English teacher. <laughs> Gave me a three on a book report because I grabbed the wrong book. I had the same title. It was the same title of the book. I just I bought the wrong one and did the book report on the wrong book. <laughs> anyway. Well, there you go. This goes to show you, it's always the stupid ones who get published. School <laughs> means nothing. School means nothing. Don't do your homework. Yeah. Do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um... Anyway, hey, Remedy's making Max... You know what? Fuck that article. Here's one. Rumor. Nintendo and Bandai Namco are remastering, remaking 3D action title. I just saw this on Twitter. What could this possibly be? Wait. I'm gonna, uh, I literally just okay. saw this on Twitter, so I don't know what okay. it is. We're going to find out together. Okay, because I was really excited about talking about max payment one and two but wow I'll, that I'll sucks go i'll, I'll go they die. just got cucked like that nintendo and bad <laughs> remake a 3d action game via reset era three new job listings uh have appeared on bandai namco's career uh studio career page all three jobs as translated from japanese state that the positions are for a 3d action game that was contracted by nintendo the third listing uh, further suggests that the game could be a remaster slash remake as the job requires the employee to do HD remastering of 3D backgrounds. The titles of the positions are for a planner and for two visual artists. That's literally the whole article. I regret putting this article in here. I'm sorry <laughs> for wasting everybody's time. It doesn't mean yeah, anything. Yeah, because what does this what does this mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything because there's two there's two problems with this. Uh, one, it could just be remastering textures for a sequel. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be a remake. They could just be reusing yeah. assets and making them nicer. Uh, or it could be a remaster. It, the possibilities are endless. Uh, this is another case of company is hiring employees yay yeah yeah Com it's like how look at that a company's working on a game <laughs> it's like how uh retro studios will post like job listings like hey you want to go work on metroid prime 4 H apply here and everyone's like oh my god metroid prime 4 is in trouble they need to hire people <laughs> that's not what that means not what it means at all fine we could talk about remedy remaking max Payne. great Remedy Entertainment, the creators of Max Payne, are pleased to announce that they are that they are remaking the iconic Max Payne and Max Payne 2, the fall of Max Payne, in a new development agreement with Rockstar Games. The relationship between Remedy and Rockstar dates back to the original release of Max Payne and Max Payne 2, uh, developed by Remedy and published by Rockstar. Both games left an indelible mark uh, in popular culture, lauded for its neo-noir atmosphere, groundbreaking storytelling, and bullet time gameplay. We are thrilled! Uh, we were we were thrilled when our longtime friends at Remedy approached us about remaking the original Max Payne games, said Sam Hauser, founder of Rockstar Games. Uh, we are massive fans of their work and Remedy and the Remedy team has created uh, over the years, and we can't wait to play these new versions of these games. Uh, Max Payne has always held the special plates in the hearts of everyone at Remedy, and we know the millions of fans around the world feel the same, said Remedy CEO Taro Vertala. Uh, we're excited to be working with our new partners at Rockstar once again. 
uh, for the chance to bring the story, action, and atmosphere of the original Max Payne uh, games back to players in new ways. Under the development agreement signed today, Remedy will develop the games as a single title for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S using its proprietary Northlight game engine. The game's development budget will be financed by Rockstar, uh, the size of which will be in line with a typical Remedy uh, AAA production. Uh, under the agreement, Remedy has a royalty, oppor a royalty opportunity after Rockstar Games has recouped this development, marketing, and other costs for distribution and publishing the game. So that's it. <laughs> so they're remaking 1 and 2. Both Max Payne 1 and 2 uh, is going to be released as a single package. Uh, is It is being financed by Rockstar, who own the Max Payne IP. Uh, Remedy did not make Max Payne 3. That was internally done at Rockstar, but they are back to do the two games they worked on in the past. Um, I, I don't think I ever played through uh, the first two Max Payne's in their entirety. I I haven't played through the second one. That's like the one game I keep rebuying on different systems to try to play, and I still have never played it. I played the first one on PlayStation 1, uh, which is not the best way to play that game. And I played I played the third one on 360, which is a fantastic game that apparently not a lot of people bought. And I'm surprised that Rockstar is doing this because Max Payne 3 did not meet their sales expectations. And by that, I mean it didn't sell Grand Theft Auto numbers. Max Payne 3... Uh, was incredible. I liked that game a lot. Oh yeah, hands down. It was beat for beat, a man on fire. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it was very good. A man on fire is a great movie. Very good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's probably also the best John Wick game we've gotten in a while, <laughs> including John Wick Hex. <laughs> True. Although John Wick Hex was very good. Um, yeah, so it'll be nice to finally have a. A, a way to although Max Payne one and two are available on uh, Xbox One and X and S, the original versions of them you can play. Uh, the original Xbox versions you can play on the Xbox One and the Series X. I uh, suspect, but these will be the new versions. I suspect that these will be very good. Uh, well, it, it'll probably just be one game. It'll probably just be Max Payne remastered. Um, yeah, they said it's going to be sold as one one title. Uh, well, it said one package. I assume it's just going to be one game. Yeah, so it'll probably be like... Uh, what the hell is that? You know, like we like the Grand Theft Auto Collection. You, It's one package, but you get three games in it. Yeah, but what if, I'm saying, if they're redoing the whole thing, what if it's just mm -hmm. one game that just goes from one and bleeds oh, right into going? two? Oh, just keeps going? Yeah. Oh, that'd be interesting. They just slam the two together. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know. I feel like they would still keep it separate. I think this is going to be very good. Uh, Remedy's yes. very good. They're going to do very good. Now, aren't they also doing Alan so. Wake? They're doing Alan Wake too, yeah. Very busy. So maybe they have enough control money to have a B team to work <laughs> on this while they're working on Alan Wake too. Interesting. Um, How many people are working there? I don't know. Uh, it is interesting that, we're, that they specifically call it a remake because that implies it's going to be different from the games we got 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, they're, gonna they're, do something. they're yeah. doing it from the ground up. This is going to be a whole yeah. thing. So that raises a, uh, an interesting question. I saw an article about this. I forgot to put in the keep because uh, we've been getting a lot of remakes specifically recently. The Resident Evil remakes, uh, Final Fantasy, uh, and now this. Uh, are remakes necessarily the better option when it comes to re-releasing older games? Or should or would it be better if we just got ports or your basic remasters? Or things I think like it that? definitely depends on the game. I think yeah, uh, a lot of games need to be re remade completely uh, yeah. in order to uh, uh, address some of the things that uh, maybe we didn't know about game design at the time, right? Uh, or maybe something about game design went in a specific direction that is just the new norm and that we're used to now. And that back in the day, maybe we were used to it or maybe we uh, we didn't know any better. So it was just fine for us. Uh, so yeah. certain things, it makes sense to to address and, and, and change. It's, it's so it, it makes sense to just do it completely from the ground up. Uh, but in other cases, I think mostly Nintendo 
games. Like those most of the time just need to be ported uh, because they're right. usually perfect right out of the box. Yeah. Uh, f- I agree for the most part. I think a game like Resident Evil 2 is a perfect example. Uh, that game when it originally came out was good. Like back then it was great even. But that style of gameplay right. with uh, fixed camera angles uh, and weird uh, movement controls and bad aiming and obtuse puzzles would not fly necessarily in a modern setting. It's so, complete... so hard. It's so, yeah. I, I every I, Resident Evil Two is one of my go tos for testing PlayStation emulation. And whenever I load that game up, I almost die in the very beginning of the game because it's yeah. it, it starts off there's like at least eight zombies, and it's so hard to move. <laughs> <laughs> so you frequently just run into the zombies at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, the remake addressed all of that by giving you, you know, an over the shoulder camera, full 360 degree movement, uh, a way to aim your gun and see what yeah. you're aiming at. Um, So I think that's a good candidate for a remake. Max Payne. I mean, I'd love to see what they're do- going to do. I'm excited for this game, but those games were not that far off from what the types of games we play today. So aside from like a graphical update and the like controller tweaks, I don't know what a full on remake, like how a full on remake could benefit a game like Max Payne. I don't know. I have to go back you know? and replay Max Payne, but I feel like there's going to be a lot right. of weird PlayStation two shit that I'm not happy about. <laughs> I do know one of the things that, like, I think they did for, uh, you know, lim- because due to the limitations of the hardware at the time, but wound up being a staple of the series were the cutscenes, were comic book cutscenes, right? And people associate that with Max Payne now. Mm-hmm. So, our even Max Payne three didn't have specifically have comic book style cutscenes, but they would like pop out, pick like uh, shots from the screen, like panels of, of a comic. So are they going to do that in this game? Are they going to get rid of them completely? Or are they going to keep the static comic book images? Yeah. That would be interesting to see how they handle that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. How, I mean, I'm sure they'll do some sort of weird stylized, like uh, like it'll be comic book be uh, comic booky, but it'll still be some sort of modern take. Yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, the first Hulk movie. <laughs> I work. Hey, that worked less than half of the time. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, one of the biggest news of the week that we saved for the for towards the end of the show. Uh, Kingdom, <laughs> there's a Kingdom Hearts there's Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah, that's announced. Uh, I had some choice words about this. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand anything about Kingdom Hearts. Uh, no. No, it, uh, apparently is... this is a new story arc for Sora that he yeah. wrap up in three and now he's she's back at it again for I some guess. reason. I guess. All right, I didn't actually uh, see this whole trailer. This is the seven. This is Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary announcement trailer. It's yeah. seven minutes and forty seconds long, and the the Kingdom Hearts four trailer is at the end. Um, yeah. This. At the beginning, this little little animation looks like shit. I don't know what <laughs> happened. <laughs> what is this at the beginning? Is this a mobile game? I have or no is this idea. just I, like, I what guess. is this? It looks like a flash animation. Why is this in my Disney? Why? What is this? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's um, Kingdom Hearts Missing Link in development for Android and iOS. The mobile game features adventures set in the world of Scala and Scala ad... Calum from Kingdom Hearts 3 and Battles Against the Heartless. Uh, it'll feature a new original story. Uh, Who's that guy? Who's the freaking... Is that Gandalf? I, I don't know. Uh, Missing Link will feature a new original sc- uh, story, but will almost assuredly tie into Kingdom Hearts 4. This is, all right, I guess they had to front load the announcement with this so that people could actually like see it and and, and they could, 
get people interested. They had to get yeah. some airtime for for this, whatever this is. It was like that E3 when they it was the E3 where they were they were going to announce Avengers and they front loaded it with all weep shit. Yes. <laughs> and then they showed Avengers. <laughs> You know, I I maybe shouldn't show footage of this because I feel like it's gonna get ah whatever I'll blur it if it needs to be blurred. Yeah. Uh, all right, what else did they show? Well, the main thing is King. We're getting Kingdom Hearts four, specifically Kingdom Hearts four, the fourth entry in the mainline Kingdom Hearts series. What? Uh, it kicks off the new epic storyline named the Lost Master Arc. Kingdom Hearts four's first trailer introduces the Quadratum, uh, which, while it looks like Tokyo, is described by Square Enix as an expansive city set in a gorgeous, realistic world unlike anything else ever seen before in a Kingdom Hearts series. It, uh, it's, it has also been includes... seen before, though, notably in uh, the Unity Assets Store or or the Unreal Engine uh, 4 uh, 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 royalty-free uh, section. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is uh I think this is being run on Unreal 5. This doesn't look great. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, sure this is super fan. early. I'm sure this is super early. You know, by the time it comes out, I'm sure it'll look better. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure it's going to look nothing like this. Yeah. But this, this looks this, this just looks like a PlayStation 3 tech demo. Is what this looks like. This is this is literally just to tell us that they're working on Kingdom Hearts Four, and it's going to be different than the last few games. I mean, you can tell because the art style is completely different. Sora doesn't look like Sora. He looks like a Final Fantasy character more than he does a Disney character now. So his I, feet are smaller. His, his shoes are smaller. He's got he's got normal shoes. Um, yeah. I made a tweet about this that uh, got some attention from the Kingdom Heart community. Uh, oh boy! I said, uh, "That's a fake ass looking Kingdom Hearts trailer." <laughs> and then I said, "Unity Asset Store looking ass." <laughs> and uh, most of the responses that I got were um, that it's a Kingdom Hearts game. This is probably just what the like. This is just one of the worlds because the worlds have different art styles. I don't. I've I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game before in my life, but all, what I've seen from Kingdom Hearts is that uh, the art style of like Sora doesn't really change that much. Not really. Like he he'll he'll change his costume to like meld into the world a bit more, but like the overall art style, like aside from the Steamboat Willie segments which are in black and white, like the overall art style doesn't really you know change all that much, right? Like and Sora I, looks the same in Tron world as he does in Aladdin world, as he does in Pirates of the Caribbean world, as he does in Nightmare Before Christmas world. Yeah, and, and all of the other characters look drastically different. Like the Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. characters are actual people. So like obviously yeah. that's different. Um But I, I will say that the combat looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know. This is like a we. This just looked weird. This look. This looked yeah. very bizarre. That I don't understand. I don't understand what that that was all about. But I I also don't understand yeah. like people are so hyped on Kingdom Hearts. Is it anybody's favorite game? I mean, I'm sure Kingdom Hearts one and two are probably somebody's favorite game. Okay. I don't think Kingdom Hearts 3 was anybody's favorite <laughs> game. I didn't even think people liked Kingdom Hearts 3, to be honest. Okay. Like, it came, like it came out, and like people were like, oh, yeah, it's kind of cool and whatnot, but like, does anyone really talk about it anymore? Cause like a lot, and a lot of reviews at the time were like, this, this plot is impenetrable. It is impossible to follow along with this, even if you played all the stupid fucking games. <laughs> So I didn't see this last part. Uh, I didn't see Donald and Goofy. They look fine. Yeah. They look fine. So what's going to happen? Like, like I want to see don't, them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are going to be, there is going to be a more concerted effort to make Sora change every time he enters a different world. Like make Sora look, Sora's art style match the different art styles of the different Disney movies. But then doesn't he have to hang out with Donald and Goofy? Like, are they going to change every time too? I don't know. 
Um, uh, uh, it's very, okay. So here, here's here's Sora. <laughs> here he is, and then here is Donald and Goofy. Does this work? Okay. All right. I don't know. I can Maybe. see it. I can see it. All right. You know what? The, the problem I have with with the the art style that you see in this trailer is that the environment just looks bland and like and like empty. Yeah. It just looks like a random city you can just generate in Unreal Engine or something. Yeah. And just generic ass, you know, people and stuff. It, it, it looked it looked really it, it it's it's weird. It's weird looking for a for a, such a big budget AAA game. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't. I mean, if they wanted to really show like what a Kingdom Hearts four could be, I'm surprised. I mean, they probably can't because of whatever agreement they have with Disney. But like, have Sora in like a completely new setting. Like, have him in uh, Avengers HQ, right? Or Tatooine, or something like that. You know, instead he's just, he's just in Tokyo. I I assume when they uh. Next time we hear about this game, they'll show some other worlds, and the, the, yeah. the, once once they secure the licensing, yeah. it's one of those situations where they don't need to make the game. You know, like uh, they don't need to spend a lot of time and budget to make the game perfect, like look perfect, mm-hmm. because people are gonna buy it anyway because they just want all yeah. of the all of the different worlds and stuff. Yeah. Um. Anyway, next news. Digital PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita games are rendered unplayable after expiring? Yes. Uh, players on PlayStation 3 and Vita are having trouble accessing their digital purchases after a strange ex- expiration date suddenly appeared on certain games as first reported by Kotaku. The problem seems to mostly affect classic titles, preventing users from playing Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, and Final Fantasy VI as the games have now expired. But here's the odd part. The expiration dates are half a century in the past. Twitter user Christopher Foose shared an image of his Chrono Cross download, which shows that the game expired on December 31st, 1969, nice, at 7.20 p.m. He says the issue only occurred after re-downloading the game and and, and that he's now unable to play it on PS3 or Vita. Okay, Uh, weird. Games... Yeah, Games Hub editor Edmund Tran similarly found out he was unable to play Chrono Cross on the PS3 thanks to a 50-year-old expiration date. And while Tran says he could still play the classic title on his Vita, he wasn't able to find the listing on the Vita store, a sign that Sony may have taken it down. Other users on Reddit and Twitter have reported an issue with Rune Factory Oceans, uh, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, Gex Enter the Gecko, and for some, their entire digital library. As outlined in the various threads and posts about the problem, some some players say uh, they've tried factory resetting their consoles, subscribing and unsubscribing to PlayStation Plus, and restoring their game licenses, all to no avail. PlayStation has yet to acknowledge the situation, and the game company didn't immediately respond to the Verge's request for comment. There is one possible reason why this may be happening, though. Kotaku notes that the issue may stem from a glitch causing the PS Vita and PS3 to revert the game's licenses expiration dates to the Unix epoch or the arbitrary time and date set by developers to designate the beginning of the console's life. Even if this is a glitch, uh, it's stoking concerns that Sony is dealing with yet another blow to the PS3 and Vita stores. After the game company uh, nearly closed down both stores last year, it made them harder to shop at by taking away the ability to use credit cards or PayPal to make purchases. Um, so it's a glitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> LJWVU in the chat says uh, they checked their Vita and all their games were fine, including Chrono Cross. Okay. Uh, so it seems like it's not really an issue anymore. My, my first thought was... Uh, this was like uh what was it um 
What was I going to say? No, I, I, I mean, the, the fact that it's in the past is very, it doesn't make any fucking yeah. sense. <laughs> um, but I guess, like, it's one of those things where the developer had to put in a date. So they were like, oh, let's do, like, 30 years in the future. And then that, that date happened. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Frank says, none of my PS3 games digital work anymore. Interesting. As did all your games expire 52 years ago? Um, well, this does, you know, they did bring up in the article that Sony did try to shut down the PS3 and Vita storefronts, um, and they didn't due to fan backlash. But, you know, it could very well be this is a sign that Sony really doesn't care about those stores anymore. And if they're not going to shut them down completely... They can let certain games expire and not do anything about it, especially well, if they're third party games. Tech Nanner in the chat says conspiracy theory. Sony knew this would happen, so they tried to shut down the stores beforehand. Okay, but then when they decided not to shut down the stores, why didn't they put in the resources to fix it? <laughs> um, now might be a good time to hack a Vita. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. Is that easy to do? I've heard it's not easy to do. I'd, I'd imagine now it is. Uh, I don't know, though. Yeah. I, don't I know, know PSP is easy to do. So uh, it's one of those things where people always tell me to do it, and I just don't want to do it because so many people tell me yeah. to do it. But also, like, uh, it's not the same as just buying a third-party portable, dedicated portable emulator. It's not the same. It's yeah. two completely different things, especially because Vitas are expensive still. Yeah. And their uh, memory cards are... A crime, how much they cost. Yeah, that's going to be... That's that's one of the biggest problems. You got to get a Vita, and then you yeah. got to get a memory card that can fit all your ROMs on it. All right, well, anyway, uh, let's plow through the rest of this news here. We got Bug Snacks coming to Switch. Bug Snacks! Wow! Coming to Switch and Xbox. Home, alongside the Isle of Big Snacks expansion pack, uh, Bug Snacks will launch on Game Pass as well. Why am I getting ads for, like, hentai games? I don't know. Why are you getting ads for hentai games? I blame Wood. Makes sense. Uh, developer Young Heroes has announced that Bug Snacks will arrive on new platforms starting April 28th, which will also mark the release of the anticipated Isle of Big Snacks expansion, both on all platforms, as well as a free update uh, for PC and PlayStation players. It will come with additional trophies on the PlayStation platforms, as well as achievements to the base list on Xbox. So yeah, everybody's favorite PS5 launch title is now coming to all game systems. I really wanted to like Bug Snacks. <laughs> it's really not that good. Mm. It's it's kind of it's Bug Snacks is kind of just Pokemon Snap. <laughs> like like a free roaming Pokemon Snap. Yeah. I saw With a really weirder cool, animal. I saw a really cool Bug Snacks uh uh shirt today yeah but now i can't find where i saw it oh here it is found it uh it was on the young horses twitter oh here it is fangamer.com look at that shirt not a sponsor just thought it was cool and also a hoodie that's really cool snack tooth aisle safari wow very wow. cool bug snacks is what i wanted pokemon snap 2 to be says tech matter that is true okay yes and I would like it more if it was Pokemon. <laughs> Honestly. Um, anyway. Uh, the last news we have. Sony and Lego. They are uh, investing billions of dollars in Epic Games. Sony is weird. investing a further $1 billion uh, in Fortnite publisher Epic Games. The investment is intended to deepen Sony's investment in the metaverse. Adding to the uh, 450 million what? it already invested in Epic last year. What the fuck? <laughs> Metaverse, is... Bob. But uh, wait, when I think of the Metaverse, I think of Facebook's Metaverse. It's so. I think this is this is a problem because the Metaverse doesn't just. Res- uh, reference what Facebook is trying to do. Okay. Metaverse in general is an online platform where you essentially live. 
It's essentially the Matrix, like an online platform okay, where you go so, in and so, you carry so a day to day just, thing. So Facebook called it the Metaverse, but Metaverse is a genre. More or less, yeah. Like Fortnite, in essence, is a Metaverse because in addition to shooting each other and building stuff, you can go to concerts and museums and right. watch movies and all that stuff. That's right. that's a Metaverse. Okay. Face, Facebook is just trying to... They're trying to be the name in the Metaverse game, so they literally renamed their entire company Meta to try oh, and corner that right. market. Now we need a new name for this, for this right. genre. Regardless... It's all stupid and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> but not only did Sony invest in Epic, but here Kibi, the ca- parent company of Lego, has also invested a billion dollars just days after Epic Games and the Lego Group announced a new collaboration to create a child-friendly space within the metaverse. I am shocked Epic and- that yeah. Kirkby has a billion dollars to spend. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're the parent company of Lego, so I, I imagine didn't know they have Lego a lot of was money. worth th- as much as I didn't know Lego was worth more than Epic. I did not know that. I didn't know Ep- I didn't know Lego had a parent company. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. But yeah, this is this is the dystopian hell we live in now. Everyone's just given, everyone's just trying to create a metaverse, and the big companies are Facebook and Epic Games. So. I'm I'm trying to see how much this company is worth. Of the guy who owns it is worth five point fifty six billion. A decent chunk of change. Yeah, I don't I I, I can't tell. Yeah. Uh all right. Well that's a lot of things we just learned. Yeah. Um I mean I'd imagine that um I mean, Ep- Epic is is worth a lot, and it's just going to keep growing and growing because uh, not yeah. only is Fortnite such a big deal, and it's it, it's still a big deal. It might be it might have fizzled out, but it, it had a huge spike recently. Um, but yeah. Fortnite's also the building blocks of some other bigger stuff. But also, Epic is the ones who do the Unreal Engine, so yeah, that's going to be uh, more and more prominent in the in the it's already a huge deal in video games uh video games are going to keep growing and they're going to keep using unreal engine starting to become a big deal in movies as well yes the mandalorian is powered by unreal um yeah so there's a there's a lot of things in our future are going to be powered by epic games so uh yeah it makes sense for stuff like this to happen uh unity who owns unity uh i'd imagine unity would be worth a lot too eventually i gotta move some stock around (laughs) well i know because as far as i know unity is just uh focused on being a games engine whereas epic is trying to be more than that it's trying to be a you know it's trying to do metaverse shit it's trying to you know be part of movies and stuff uh Unity is made by Unity Technologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are an independent independent entity. Not owned by anyone, really. I'm I'm looking at their stock now. (laughs) They're actually down compared to November. Okay. I'm not a stock guy. They're down from (laughs) a year ago. La- their last spike was yeah last November. Bye bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, yeah. I'd imagine Epic is just gonna keep growing and growing. People are getting more interested in it and stuff. Oh no! Wait, Unity bought Weta Digital for one point six three billion dollars last year. And what is Weta Digital? They're Peter Jackson's visual effects company. I'd imagine that soon Unity... I mean, Unity is a huge deal in games, and and and, and especially for smaller creators, uh, Unity is like the go-to. 
Um, yeah. But I'd imagine they see what's happening with the Unreal Engine and they're going to try to jump in on that. Uh, yeah. Any minute now. And when they announce that, it's going to, it'll probably be a huge deal. Yeah. Um, so th- I, I feel like that, that there's a, there's going to be a huge future in, in, uh, in, studios like like movie and tv studios using these uh game engines for their for their productions anyway uh that's all the news yes uh we do we do have we do have uh, what do we have a tweet of the week (laughs) oh Uh, but this one's a weird one. This is a weird, wacky one. Uh, right. because it's me. <laughs> Here's what happened. Uh, All right. I tweeted about time and it's my receipt for the steam deck. And then Richard, a uh, review tech USA tweeted, eat my ass, Bob Wolf. I gave into a scalper because I still haven't received the email. LOL. And then I said, I'm sure you can get your ass eaten for what you paid that scalper. <laughs> now, that's not why it's the tweet of the week. The reason okay. it's the tweet of the week is because Gully Kit liked the tweet. <laughs> Gully Kit <sighs> is a controller manufacturer. <laughs> yeah. they there. I made a video on their controller last week. They liked my tweet about... Review Tech USA getting his ass eaten, <laughs> and then they sw- and then they replied and said, "Okay, same. LOL. We got sixty four gigabyte from Scalper. Can't wait. Long time. There's a there's a well, language okay. barrier. <laughs> yeah. I just I was very excited when I saw a <laughs> uh, an actual company, a game company, like my tweet about. Eating ass. eating ass. So this, we know where they're. You know, we know where they're at. This this is the world we live in now. <laughs> it's a very popular thing to do, from what I've been told. Good on you. Good on you for doing it. Yeah. Yeah. If you do it, I don't. Poo comes out of there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Eating ass seems like a company I want to support. <laughs> this is more lyric. <laughs> anyway, uh, now we'll talk to you guys. How about yes, that? Yes, starting with the people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast, which you can see on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you want to get your comments answered, leave a comment over there. And if you're lucky, Fred will pull it and we will answer it. Now, I was told Fred did some dumb shit. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Brenda says, hashtag Will was right. At the coffee shops I worked at, the cold brew is brewed in room temperature for 12 hours. The concentrate is then placed in the fridge to cool. So then why? <laughs> you, you can dilute it with water, one-to-one ratio at any point. Coffee shops usually do it before it goes in a fridge. All right. Counter argument. You work at a fucking coffee shop. You're not going to put all of that shit in the fridge for 12 hours to brew, okay? You need a lot of space for the brews to happen. You're at home, put it in the fridge. I have one roommate and we're both, you know, like we're both terrible with food. So our fridge is almost always empty. So there is room in that fridge for shit. (laughs) I learned the hard way that you're supposed to dilute it with water uh i got the ratio wrong and man it felt like just drinking straight coffee concentrate uh i've never done drugs that's probably the closest i've ever I come think i you did it a lot though you were drinking yes. it a lot and i remember yes, i'm like what is wrong with me what why do i feel like i just ran up and down the block a hundred times how did this conversation come about because i remember we had this conversation at the dinner I table don't- I don't. I think I I must have said it, and you must have gotten mad at me for doing coffee <laughs> wrong. What, did you? I don't even think you made the cold brew. I think that you bought cold brew that was a concentrate. No, I made the cold brew. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a cold brew maker. The mm-hmm. one that I used. I, 
Oh, you last did week is their my, directions yeah, for, and their directions yes. is for concentrate. Okay. Yes. Anyway, Mr. Pav the Sav says, I'm a supervisor at Starbucks. All right. <laughs> Ban this man. I'm not making Starbucks cold brew, okay? We brew at, we brew with our five pounds of coarsely ground beans with 28 liters of water at 20 hours at room temperature. 20 hours is fucking insane. They tell you to do it for 24 hours. That's so much time. And maybe that's because it's at room temperature. Uh, but he does say, yes, I know, grown because of Starbucks. Now, okay, so you ever have the Starbucks cold brew from the supermarket? No. Uh, the dark roast tastes like uh, Review Tech's USA's asshole. It's uh, like Starbucks coffee is is like purposely burnt a little bit. Yeah. And like it comes across in flavor. The, the dark roast cold brew... Um, has like an artificial, like smoky, f like barbecue flavor. It's disgusting. That is odd. But anyway, uh, I don't like this whole room temperature thing. You got room in the fridge, put it in the goddamn fridge. I mean, don't knock it till you tried it. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna make two batches. I'm gonna leave one on the counter and I'm gonna put one in the fridge and I'm gonna see which one tastes better. And I bet you they're going to taste exactly the same. Probably. I do. I, I watch a lot of coffee content on YouTube and um, they always do taste tests for the most like minute changes that they do. And yeah. they always have something to say and they always do blind taste tests and they usually get it right. And I'm always like, how the fuck can you tell the difference they're yeah. all just bitter brown water. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, anyway, Daniel says, think Nintendo is more likely to make Mario Maker 3 slash 3D or Mario Kart Maker. Oh, definitely no. Mario Maker. I don't see a Kart Maker happening. Maybe it'll be added into a Mario Kart game. Yeah. Like uh, you can build your own tracks and stuff. That would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, DK Fun Entertainment says, I've noticed a bunch of YouTube comments sound like people don't even watch the video. They just respond from the title. Very weird. Keep up the good work, bros. That's just always how YouTube has been. Um, yeah. And especially f with, uh, with a two-hour lot, like like VOD, like people, people aren't going to sit through the whole two hours, yeah. statistically. Um, I think YouTube should make a little toggle that only allows comments if you've watched the whole video. That would be that would be a good thing to do. They're not going to do that. Yeah. Or or watch 2 minutes. Like, you know, like yeah. whatever the average view like whatever the average view duration is, that. Watch it for that well, long and then you can comment. I don't know cuz then that can cause abuse too cuz you'll sit there and wait uh, for that time limit to end and you know the video hasn't gotten to the point yet and you'll still jump in and like you know jump the gun with your bad hot take you know what I mean yeah but it'll be less bad mm -hmm. it'll be like because most people are just commenting from the title yeah so hopefully your concern will be addressed right in the beginning mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, the last one from last week says, Sean Barrett says, useless information, but yes, Bob, there w was a PS2 bundle that came with an ATV MX game. Not sure if that's the one you were thinking of. Um, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of Xbox specifically. I'm thi I, I think I said that because our PS2 came with MX versus ATV. And I was specifically referring to the bundles that GameStop sold. GameStop oh. would always have a bundle that included MX versus ATV, whatever. That because there's just Xbox? a million of them. So for PlayStation Two. Oh, because that's yeah. I, I'm thinking there were MX versus ATV was always in. They would always have a stack of them. They were always in the bargain bin for Xbox. Right. Maybe I'm uh -huh. getting it confused with PlayStation, but. I, I mean, either way, there was there was a lot of them that there were, were always like, there. They're like Madden games. There are a million of those games. Right. There was like two a year, 
So it would make sense that there would just be a stack of them and that GameStop would put them in their pre-owned bundles. True, true. Okay, now we're in the chat. Uh, yes. Uh, George McFarlane, Bob, in your last video, you mentioned doing the same contr controller mod you did last September. Was there anything different this time around or was it mostly the same? So he's talking about um, the clicky button mod in my pro controller. I mm -hmm. did it pretty much exactly the same way. Uh, I only had to redo it once. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I did it, I had to redo it over and over again because I couldn't get it right. I uh, The soldering on two of the buttons was bad, so I just had to redo it, and, and it ended up working fine. The other difference was the Y button. The last time I did it, uh, some of the buttons, I had to file away some of the plastic in order for these switches to fit. Um, mm. This time around, I only shaved off a little bit of the Y button. And it worked pretty much perfectly. It's like a little wobbly, but it, it it's it's pretty much fine. Right. So if you do it right, you only have to shave a very little bit of the plastic out of the Y button because for whatever reason, that button uh, sticks out a little too much, and it's hard to close. You can't close the case, or else it'll always hold down Y. So if you're right. gonna do the clicky button mod, you gotta shave off a very little bit of that Y, just a very little bit. Um. Anyway. Uh, Billabong23 says, when I do happen to order Starbucks cold brew, I actually ask for it uncut, straight yeah. cold brew, no water, no ice. Hate the ones that have the mandatory tap and water it down like crazy. No, I don't drink the whole thing uh, in one sitting. I just don't want weak crap when I'm on the road. Are you putting ice in it? Maybe it's... Uh, yeah, you, you gotta do something, eventually. man. Because your heart will explode. <laughs> It's just not good. It just doesn't taste good. I don't yeah. think black coffee tastes good. I'm sure there's black coffees that do, uh, but I'm a big coffee snob, and I don't like black coffee. <laughs> I haven't had black coffee in, like, two years because it was just doing weird things to my stomach. So, mm -hmm. like, I have to, like, cut it with, like, almond milk or something like that. So I, I couldn't tell you. It is, like, if you get the wrong kind of black coffee, it's very acidic. And it, it gives yeah. you a tummy ache. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway. Uh, KJAX says, Bob, have you heard of the Zoom 65 QK65? They are nice 65% keyboards for a pretty good price. No. Uh, I will look it up right now. Uh, I, got an, I got this Akko keyboard. Uh, which was, it, it seemed to me, like, all right, it doesn't flash like this, it's just the shutter speed's bad. Um, <laughs> this seemed like it would be a nice, cheap alternative to that custom keyboard that I have at the studio that was, like, very expensive. Um, yeah. I, this keyboard's good, but it does feel really cheap. And, and, and uh, I liked it for, like, when I first got it, and I was all excited about it, and then I realized the eight key sticks... Um, and then I, I had some back and forth with Akko, the company that made it. Um, and they said they made me do all, I, I, I said that the key is the problem and they made me do all these things. They made me change the switches, which is not something like I would ever tell a customer to do. Like that's a weird right. thing, but, uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a switch puller, so I just swap the keys and then the nine key stopped working because i swapped it then i fixed it and everything was fine anyway uh it, it was the key cap because i'm not stupid um and then they said does it look like this and they showed me one that had excess plastic and i looked and mine has excess plastic and that's why it sticks and they're like okay ah. take an exacto knife and shave that plastic off <laughs> i said no send me a new eight key please <laughs> so now they're sending me a new key um but that was weird uh yeah i kind of wish that i got a a, a a a fully built one from kbd fan no yeah no from kbd fans but they're also expensive uh, see now uh nzxt is doing custom keyboards and mice yeah i don't like them that much i didn't really like them <laughs> I, so yeah. so um corsair had really nice keyboards or nice looking keyboards i can't find them anymore they like sold them for a very short period of time. Huh. What the hell was the name of the, these keyboards? Uh, 
the ones Q K sixty five. Yeah. And meanwhile, Logitech does not sell these types of keyboards, and that's the only brand I buy. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not about those, like the Logitech Coolmaster, all the, all that stuff. Yeah. This looks like a cool keyboard. Do I have to build it though? <laughs> oh, I like these. I like with the knob. Those are cool. I don't know what the hell the knob does or what I would do with the knob, but uh, it looks cool. I don't even think this is it. This is it. It's a whole ass video. I can't just find a purchase link. I, this is why keyboards, <laughs> it's, it's so it's so hard buying a keyboard. Yeah. There's like a billion of them and they're always, there's never just like a website you can buy them from. That's why I kind of liked Akko because they just have a website you could buy a fucking keyboard. You don't have to buy all the parts from all these different websites and stuff. Also, KBD fans has like options where you can get them lubed already. And uh, yeah, that's right. I said lubed. You made a face. What's that about? I know. Because I, I, it's weird thinking you got to lube up your keyboards, but you okay. You got to lube up your keyboard. You don't I know why keyboard. you have to, but it's not, it's not something I think about <laughs> very often. Uh, I like Logitech quality products, says Quinn Derson. I love their mice. Yeah. I have this one and then i have uh my favorite is the mx revolution yeah uh, if i ever MX go crazy 3. i'm gonna buy that mx yeah. master 3 it's incredible yeah. it's awesome and, and i was worried about not getting a gaming mouse but th no this is fucking same it's great it's, that's <laughs> all right I, uh, come at me i don't care i'm convinced gaming mice is a scam <laughs> they, like okay. it's just it's just another uh you put gamer on it and it's still for like an inflated price so they had the, the thing i wanted a white mouse and i wanted a logitech mouse and the only white one that i saw that i would want was uh like 150 dollars, and i was like i don't want to spend that much on a freaking mouse because yeah. it was super light so if you're a if you're a, like a pro gamer they like to use their whole arm when they when yeah. they aim and stuff and i don't really do that so like i understand why you would want a light mouse also these like gaming mice they have uh, like high DPIs, like like they can like, high DPIs and weights. You can put weights in them and stuff. The, the, but. the thing is that you never get that high anyway. Like even yeah. when you're playing a game, like like my I always use this leave the sensitivity at default anyway. So like yeah, I got these. <laughs> the master is. three. I mean, honestly, I mo ninety nine percent of the time I'm on the computer, I am working. So, yeah, I it, it's stupid to spend that much on a mouse that's better for gaming and not better for actual working. Um, but also the MX Master Three is great for gaming too. So I haven't had a problem. There you go. Uh, Open you Serious need Fox all says. Sense. Sorry, Will. It's not a scam. The gaming mice uses a larger sensor to improve tracking information, uh, tracking performance. Um, I'd argue it's negligible. Uh, that yeah that i would i would almost say, nobody will notice the difference yeah like maybe if you're like a top tier gamer and like you go back and forth between a gaming mouse and a regular mouse you'll notice the difference but for most people a similarly priced similarly specced gaming mouse and regular mouse gonna be the same thing i'm gonna i would say if you're not diamond in valorant or if you're over 30 you won't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the best bet if you're looking at a Logitech game mouse, the used market is the way to go. You can usually score a mouse for more than half retail price on eBay. I got to be honest with you, the this mouse that I have is gross. So I, I don't <laughs> want to, I do not want to get somebody else's sweaty, gross yeah. mouse. Um, uh, G six o two has a toggle for what sensing mode and DPI plus plenty of thumb switches. I can understand maybe you want a different sensitivity for different games, or maybe you want one sensitivity for just navigating around your computer and one sensitivity for playing a game. So having a toggle would be cool. Yeah. Uh, again, ninety nine percent of the time I'm on my computer, I am working, so I'd rather have a mouse. That's yeah. 
better for that. Uh, this mouse has those uh, toggles for the sensitivity. And whenever I hit one by accident, I get pissed because I, I just want it to be the same. <laughs> the only cool thing I like about this mouse is that it's wireless and it's, you know, super fast. But um, this, so it's got the scroll wheel that clicks. But yeah. you hit this button and it doesn't click anymore. Oh, yeah, I got the same thing. So it's not very unique, is it? <laughs> no, it's, it's a, now, that's a Logitech thing. The, so the MX Master 3 doesn't have the button it's just if you scroll you hear clicks and if you scroll hard enough it just goes huh it's kind of really cool uh anyway hey wolf bros it's been a while i'll be headed to new york city for fish the band i didn't know they still tour i knew i knew that they did i did not how could they still broke up but good on them. Uh, have a good time, Mako Fox. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming they're playing the Garden. I don't know where else they would yeah. play. Uh, what is there around there? You got Koreatown? Mm. Well, let me tell you a story. Isn't that Garden? Okay. Uh, on Saturday, I went to yes. an omakase with Hannah. It was great. Right. It was fif- it's 15 courses. And individual oh sushis. They give you a, mm-hmm. 15 individual little sushis that they take like a freaking hour to make each. And right. they were all fantastic, except for the uni. Mm-hmm. Uni is disgusting. Um, and it was awesome. After, after that, we went and I got her a Korean corn dog in Koreatown. Okay. And she took a bite out of the Korean corn dog and she said... This is the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. She just got done with a 15-course omakase, and the best Mm -hmm. thing she's ever eaten in her life was a Korean corn dog. Well, uh, two things. One, she seems to be a a girl of simple taste. There's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) I probably would have said the same thing. Two, what makes a Korean corn dog different from, from American corn dog? Okay, so a lot... It's, right. it's, uh, so the good one has like, it's like potato on the outside that's deep fried. Right. Um, okay. and then you put, they put sugar on top and you have all of the little fixings you can put just ketchup on it or whatever. And, uh, there could be cheese around the hot dog part. Okay. It's really just the sugar. But there's other the way that they fry it is usually oh it's rice that okay so um so, the the regular one is a rice corn dog so there's like rice uh, like 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 the actual batter is like rice batter okay that's what's different but in this okay. case the the good one's the potato one I think the the one that's like deep fried with potato on the outside got it okay um good to know. I will use that to impress all of my easily impressible weeb friends the next time I see them. And you can get that in Koreatown. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, for all you gamers, baseball fans, the Cubs' new rookie is a Japanese player named Seiya Suzuki. A t-shirt company made this shirt in his honor. Uh, oh, I, see I get shirt. it. It's the Sega font, but it says Seiya. Oh. <laughs> nice. Very funny. <laughs> uh, I had to go on Etsy because uh, I, I bought a little tray for all of our Game Gear games. I counted. We have 10. And they, I got a tray that holds exactly 10. So I finally have a place. They're not just in a bag anymore. I reached into this pocket in my bag that I haven't reached into in a while. Mm-hmm. And I found a couple games. Oh. Game uh, Gear games? Because I don't want to buy another track. I found where my Advil's at. There is one Game Gear game. <laughs> ah. Uh, Which one? Let's see, let's see what I pulled out here. 
we have uh wario land which i think we have more than one of okay mega man 2 okay uh, metroid Z uh fusion metroid fusion yes and the game gear game is triple trouble we have two versions of triple trouble then oh okay never mind where is donkey kong 94 you asked me that before. I ne I didn't know we even owned that we, game. We owned it. I thought I had it. I don't. I thought I gave it to you when you were doing your analog uh, video. We don't. I've never uh, you didn't, seen that you game before in my it. life. It's got to be somewhere. And for I don't want to go out and Boy? buy another. Yeah, Donkey Kong 94 for Game Boy. I've never seen this game before in my life. Well, I don't want to go out and buy another version I'll, of it. I'll I'm check sure my little Game now. Boy cabinet and see what's up, yeah. but I, I don't remember that game. Um. Anyway. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, I think that's... Uh, oh, Open Series Fox. Thanks for the 13 months. I didn't realize that was a subscription notification. And Frank Urchiha, thank you for the 100 bits. And Ultimate Mario Bro, thanks for the 100 bits. Hope you're well my man love your videos thank you very much and edward bova thanks for gifting a sub wicked spooky thank you for the prime and i think that's it thank you for being here thank you for hanging out everybody thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolfden podcast every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolfden podcast so you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfden podcast in your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I've been wanting to stream more, uh, and then I just don't. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I gotta stop saying I'm gonna stream like before. Uh, it's just gotta happen, you know. Uh, <laughs> this week's video might be a Friday video. Uh, I got a lot to do, uh, and right. uh, that's that. So. I don't know. Uh, hopefully I'll stream Thursday. I doubt I'll stream tomorrow. Uh, right now, go watch Wood. He's live. Uh, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.